Hi, thanks for joining uh, our presentation today. Um, uh, it will be about uh, a new feature that we have added to the GNU tool chain. Uh, the name is uh, CTF, which stands for Compact Type Format, uh, C Type Format, and it is actually uh, debugging information format, if you're familiar with what those are, um, like dwarf, uh, stabs, uh, cough. And um, uh, we have two presenters. I mean, I'm just doing the introduction and uh, Nick Alcock, which is actually uh, the main engineer on this work, will actually explain you all the details. Uh, this talk is kind of a follow-up, as you see from the title, Progress Report. It's a follow-up from uh, a talk that I did in uh, 2019, last year at OSS Europe in Lyon. Um, about how we had started this work and what had been contributed upstream at that point. So this is a perfect time and a perfect opportunity to show you guys what else has been done uh, to introduce this new feature uh, in the GNU tool chain to support this uh, compact uh, type of debugging information. So I will leave it here uh, to Nick to continue and um, we'll see you for the Q&A at the end. Thank you very much. Nick, you can go. Okay. So, um, the contents are fairly, uh, are fairly obvious. I, I basically plan, plan to dive straight into the file format and give a, an overview, overview of it because that's the key here. The, 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 file, the file format is what it is, what it is that, makes this, that makes this thing worth using. There is, uh, there is a library which, um, which can be used to access the file format so you don't need to do all the work yourself and i'll go into that a bit um and describe the, uh, and describe the new functionality we've had in the last year which is getting on we, we, by the time this presentation it actually airs i hope we will have everything in place for it to be for it to be completely usable for everybody the last pieces are going in now um what uh, what is it um it's a model of, of the um of the C type system, or of, the, of a of a single scope of the C type system. If you think if you think of a of a single translation unit, um, CTF can record the types of, 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 for example, all global all global variables or all global types appearing in a single translation unit. Um, it does not have scopes. It is a single it is a single global scope of some C file. And it can also it can also map um, any anything in the else symbol table or any fu any function any, um, any function any global global data object um, to a to, to a type um, and and that type it, and all the types that relate to that type and so on and so forth. Um, it's generated by GCC with one extra. Uh, you pass one flag and it spits it, and it spits it out. Uh, um, Linker deduplicates it um, whenever it's present um, and emits and and emits a generally much smaller CTF section in the output. Um, and it's and the GDB can use it, or once the patch is upstream, will be able to use it to look up types and so on and so forth. Uh, Obdump and Redelf can can dump it as well. It is small. Um, Dwarf is known for being rather large. This is about five percent, is about five percent the size, and sometimes smaller. Uh, it will get smaller as well because this is, we haven't actually focused on on size reductions yet. Um, all all the types are duplicated, so the out, the output is often much smaller than the input. Uh, the spec is here, and I've got a link. There's a link to the API at the end of this slide, and also the, there are all these links are also in the references at the end. Here's an example of the size size is using important programs. Um, <laughs> the um, the, 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 all the sizes here are sizes of CTF sections alone. Um, so the largest single input O size is actually the size of a CTF section in the O file, which had the largest um, CTF section in it. And you can see the input, we don't really bother de de deduplicating very much. The priority is getting the compiler to output it fast. So 50 meg on the input turns into 50K on the, on the output, which is, or for the extra, that's 5 meg on the input, turns into 50K on the output, which is not bad. And adds half a second to the link time, which is much less time than it, uh, than it would add if you were, if you were emitting dwarf, because dwarf is so voluminous. 
Um, Emacs, Emacs is an interesting case because it's got a whole bunch of types with the same name and different definitions scattered throughout itself. We can handle that. Now, the compressor size is a bit bigger, but not much. The time is noticeably larger because it's got lots of translation units, and at the moment, the linker is not multi threaded. Um, usage, I've really already gone through this. You compile with minus GT, um, it, spits, it, it spits stuff out. Um, the patch to cause the compiler to emit CTF is not upstreamed yet. It needs to be reworked. It is being reworked. It will quite possibly be reworked at the time, at the time this, uh, by the time this presentation airs. Here's hoping. Um, LD picks all, picks all of these CTFs up, deduplicates it, emits one in the output. Um, in theory, this should work for everything, not just ELF, uh, but this requires a bit more work in LD at the moment. At, at the moment, it works in ELF, and that's enough, and that's enough for now. In theory, it could work with everything. Um, I do, I do want it to work with with PE, uh, so that uh, so that Windows programs could benefit. Because why not? If it's not much work, um, GDB can use it. Um, or um, again, the patch isn't upstreamed, but it will be upstreamed fairly uh, um, fairly soon. We really think think we can upstream it until the compiler is upstreamed. Um, LD and GDB use the same library to do all the CTF work. There's only a few lines of code outside that library, and either of them or a few hundred lines in GDB's case. Um, the compiler doesn't doesn't use that library. I think I think the garbage collector in GCC gets in the way or something like that. It was easier not to use it. Um, might as well dive might as well dive into the file format. And I just need to drag this window out of the way. Sorry. Um, might as well dive into the file format. It's described in the CTFH header that Binutils installed. Um, it's pretty simple. It's a header and then a bunch of sections. Um, sections is an annoying name because CTF is itself a section inside 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 an ELF object. We might rename CTF sections to something else simply to, simply to make it less confusing. But for now, sections they are. They are changeable. Um, we, we always guarantee that we can read old formats but we might bump, bump the file format version occasionally to increase compactness or add support for new languages or something like that, because this may not always be C only. Um, the version is three at the moment. We can still read two and one. Um, one is basically the same CTF that Solaris used, but not quite. Um, I, I, I do plan to add support for that, for reading those. Uh, V4 is being planned. All the planning for V4 will be included in boxes like this one. Um, I'm going to have hints of hints about what that is throughout the talk. Um, there are flags in the header. Uh, there's only one flag at the moment. It says this is compressed with Zlib. We can press big, big enough CTF sections with Zlib. Small ones, there's not really any benefit. Virtually everything you'll ever see is compressed. Um, the, um, we, we in fact optimize ourselves to reduce. Uh, the, the file format is optimized for best compression. Uh, we only add they add things if it, we think they will compress well. Uh, what are, what are the sections? Um, we, uh, we, uh, we may as well go through these in order, ignoring the unused ones. Um, the, uh, the, the first two are the data objects and function info sections. Um, these put together are, have one entry for every symbol in the L, every object and function symbol in the L symbol table, and each of them is simply a is simply a type index, a type, a type ID in the type section. Um, it used to be much more complicated, but we simplified it recently. Uh, this means that you can, that given a symbol type, a symbol number, you can you can immediately ask CDF, what is the type of this uh, 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 of this variable? What is the type? Uh, what is the type signature of this function? And get uh, and get it back, and then you can wander around the structures and uh, in the function or whatever. Um, before the linker runs. Oh, I can get, I, I can I can probably go into this later. But before the linker runs, we don't know the order of the of, of the symbols, and we don't even know which symbols will exist in the output. We need to be able to communicate between the compiler and the linker, um, and so for that we have an index section um, for, for both of the for, for both of the data objects and function info sections, uh, which you could use to say rather than working in working in in symbol table order. Um, use the index section just to, uh, to, to assign a name to each of these symbols, and then you can just look up a symbol by name. In practice, you'll probably very rarely see this outside, uh, outside the, um, the after linking has happened, and the libctf API completely abstracts this all, all, all away, so you never need to pay attention to it. But the option is there. Um, there is also a variable info section, 
this will probably go away in V4 and be replaced with the data object section, uh, which simply lets you say, I don't have, uh, I've got all these data, data objects which don't have symbols, I want to know what types they are. Most people aren't going to want this. Um, you need your own symbol resolver because all you've got is a name and a type. What looks up the name? It, with no symbol table entry, you wouldn't have an address or anything. It is sometimes useful for things like kernels and things that have their own symbol resolver. Um, it's not omitted by default. You need to pass in a special a special flag to the linker CTF variables to turn it on. It, but the option is there. Then there's a type section which records all the types in a long um, in a long array, and then there's a string table. The string table is shared with the else string table. Um, any strings which exist uh, which exist in the else string table are eliminated from the, from the one in the CTS in the CTF file, the save space. Um, so it's, um, so it's references to strings in, in, in the rest of the CTF file can refer to either the else string table or this one. Uh, we sort it because that pushes compression efficiency up a bit. Um, we've tried cleverer tricks; uh, they don't actually save space after you after you compress. Modern compressors are very clever. Um, so what does the type section look like? This is the most important section in the, in the file, obviously, or in the dictionary, I should say. Uh, it's just an array. Um, the, the length of each array, of each array entry is variable um, and includes its own length. Um, um, it, it includes its own length, but does not inc include any kind of uh, um, any kind of identifier for each type. When you open the file, you have to walk through the array and associate an offset with the, uh, with, the, uh, with each with each ar ar array entry uh, array element, um, so you can tell which type is which is which. They refer to each other by these IDs, so the so the types are important. The, the IDs are important, but they are not recorded in the file. This is simply because it, because you because if you recorded an, one, uh, the ID with every, with every entry, every ID would be its own, would be its own symbol to the compressor, and it, would, it, it significantly increases the size of the file after compression to have entries be self-describing. So we intentionally avoid it. This is a significant difference from Dwarf, which goes to great lengths to self-describe everything. Um, the, the type section is very, is very simple. You, it's, looks, each entry looks roughly like this. Uh, it's got a, it's got the name of the type if there is one zero if it isn't an info info which describes what sort of thing the type is and either a size of the, the size of the type or some other type this type refers to um, you can't do both at once in a it, it, um, the pointers use one structures use the other if you see if you see um, the, um, the 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 info word is crucial um, it's it's Got three entries in it at the moment. This is probably going to change in V4. Um, the kind of thing is it an integer? Is it a pointer? Is it a struct? These all have different representations inside CDF. Is it visible to users? Some types aren't. Sometimes you can't look up a type by name. It's very rare, but it can happen. Um, if types have root turned off, you can have duplicates with the same name, and they don't conflict. Um, and VLAN is the remaining length of, the, uh, of this entry, the distance to the, to the next array element. It's not the it's not the size of the type. It's the size of the description of the type. Um, v4 will probably add a more compact um, a, a more conf compact representation for small types and types that refer to types early in the um, early in the type graph, like int, because there are very many of them. Um, the length, the, the, uh, it, this is followed by variable length data. There might be none pointers. Um, there might be little little fixed size structures. Arrays just have a thing saying, we are this length. We, we, the, the array is this length. It, it's element, elements are of this type. Um, and then there are things that have an actually variable amount of variable data, like structures. For structures, VLAN is the number of members. Um, so, and for unions, for enums, VLAN is the number of, of enumerations, that sort of thing. Um, huge structures get a different, actually get a different type of array member. Uh, because you can have you, you can have structures with enormous offsets, you know, ten gigabytes or something. You don't want to waste space encoding enormous offsets. So, so, so you have a so, so we have a separate sort of structure of structure to encode array elements to encode to encode structure members if the structure is vast. This is actually true of the type section as well. If the type is more than thirty-two type size is more than so large that thirty-two bits can't record it, we stick another a couple of elements on the end um, to give a sixty-four bit. Um, a 64-bit value. There's no point wasting space in most types for that, so we, so we overlay them on each other. Um, V4 will probably add, an, add, add another um, sort of array member for small structures, you know, less than 
two by five bytes, because most structures are small, so we can save a bit of space. It will probably also have some have a, have a place you can record a prefix. For example, if you look at the CTFS type, all the structure members have to start with the same name, start with the same prefix. This is very common in C um, for, for ridiculous historical reasons. Um, so, uh, so, so we should probably exploit this. Um, the, 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 tr the trick about doing things, the, the trick about doing things this way, is that if we have no constant prefix, you just that we just don't fill in the constant prefix, the constant prefix member, and the uh, and the another space taken by the compressor to record this is zero bytes, so it compresses well. Um, it's always you, you, compressing no bytes always works. Um, there are a few unusual sorts of sorts of kinds of type which don't actually appear in C. Um, but do, uh, but do appear in CDF a, a distinction between the storage format on disk and what users see when they want to see what a type system is like. Um, this isn't hidden very well by the API at the moment. You don't it, it, um, when you're creating things, you want to see them. When you're looking them up, you don't. We will probably improve this in the future uh, compatibly. At the moment, we only have slices, um, which you you can say the this slice of this integer. Um, it, it, uh, is a three is three bits wide and starts at bit seven. Um, it's used for bit fields and nothing else. V4 may add structure deltas if they if they if they turn out to work, which would let you say this structure looks like that structure over there, but it doesn't have these members. It's got these members instead. You can delete a few members from it and add a few. This would probably save space if um, if you have um, uh, translation units with a lot of similar structures in them and a lot of uh, um, and, and so on and so forth. At the moment. At the moment, I'm stymied by not entirely being entirely sure how, how to figure out when to use deltas, but I'm going to try to add them and see if it works. A couple of examples. This is, um, this is using uh, C99 designated initializer syntax. If you're not familiar with it, this is just a, a, a uh, it's just structure member names after a dot. Um, this is what, roughly what an integer looks like. And the name would be the offset of the string int in the strip tab. Uh, the info would have a kind of integer, um, and uh, uh, it is root visible, so you can look up a name int, int and get this type back, and it has no variable length data, it is four bytes long, the type is four bytes long. Um, the variable length data, um, it so happens, is also always four bytes long for an integer, that's got nothing to do with CTT size. It's a, it simply says, in this case, the integer, uh, the integer is, is, is a signed integer. Offset and bits will almost always be zero. We're probably going to eliminate them in, uh, in format v4. Uh, a more complicated example, a structure member, or a structure with two members. Um, it, much as before, the CTT name is the, uh, uh, would, would be the offset of foo in the string table, or in the old string table. Um, there is, a, I think we're going to the string tables later, the high bit of the um, string table offset uh, is one if you look, if you have to want to look it up in the old string table and zero if you want to look it up in the CTF. Um, the VLAN is a bit different for structures. It's the cat and it's the number of fields in the structure, number of structure members. Um, the size is the size of structure too. Um, the difference you know, the difference here is quite obvious that size is the size of the type. VLAN is the size of the um, is, is the size of the description of the type in the CTF. Um, and in this case. We have to uh, the, uh, the variable length data is to, is to, is two instances of, of struct CTF member v2 giving a name. The offset in bits, not bytes. Uh, this is a, provides another way to encode bit fields, uh, the recommended way, in fact. Um, and the t and the type, uh, which is a reference to a, to a type ID, which is an array offset in the type section. So it's, uh, so the types chain to each other, and you can chase them down. Um, you can have more than one dict at once uh, because a dict is a is a, um, is a single gigantic C scope. This is sometimes not enough for, deb for debugger uses. You often want to pile as many types as you, uh, as you can together so the users can can cast from one thing to another without worrying about whether they're visible from a single uh, from uh, the translation unit they're looking in at the moment. But not always. So sometimes you might have the same type of uh, uh, types with the same name, but completely different definitions in different translation units. Um, Emacs, given as an example earlier, has lots of these uh, in this page in particular. Um, CTF dicts don't support these, um, but dicts can, can can chain to other dicts as parents. It's a, a two-level tree. Um, to, uh, um, 
and the child dicts can refer to types in their parents. Um, there is an archive format which groups lots of CTF dictionaries together into, into named groups. It's not exactly ideal, but this is at the moment what the linker emits into the CTF section if it finds ambiguous types and needs to emit, and needs to emit, more, than, emit more than one. In future, we will change this to keep the same API so that libctf users don't need, uh, don't need to don't need to touch things, don't need to change. The, pro the problem with doing things this way is they all have their own string tables and they all have their own symbol tables and, they, and they're not deduplicated together. Um, it works okay, but I don't like the archive format, uh, speaking as a person who came up with it, and we're going, to, we're going to change this to something else compatibly. The easiest way to use all this stuff is via, is via libctf. It's part of binutils. Um, it's shipped whenever you've got binutils. You might need binutils devel instead. Um, the API is grouped into a fruit a few big chunks. Um, you can add, you can add dictionary, you can create dictionaries via CTF add. If you're familiar with the old Solaris libctf, this was a very bad API in Solaris. It got exponentially slower the more you added, that's fixed. Um, you can add millions of entries and it's just as fast as adding a few. Um, see that there's a CTF link, which lets you take several dictionaries, um, Add them, add them, in, add them to a bigger one, and then write the bigger one out. Um, LD uses this um, to to link dicts together. It deduplicates them as well, although you need Binutils master for that. Um, you can call CTF. Uh, many of these things only work on newly create. These two only work on newly created dictionaries, which are writable. You can't it, you can't modify dictionaries which have been written out once you read them in. But once you but, but, but what you can do is you can query them. With CTF type, uh, which lets you wander wander around, chase types to other types, and so on and so forth. Then a, a lot of improvements in this area, I will go, which I'll go into later. You can open and close dictionaries. In fact, you can open those whole elf objects, and it will look up the .ctf section for you. Um, there are a few functions to do with CTF archives, and there are iterators that let you work over all types in a all types in, 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 in a dictionary, all members in a structure, all enumerators in a, all enumerated enumeration members in an enumerator, that sort of thing. Uh, the API in Binutil, any released versions of Binutils, is stable, but we plan to change it. Uh, if there are going to be some renamings to make things clearer, uh, old code will still compile, old, co old, old code will still work, but you might get deprecation warnings. Some of the names are terrible. I mean, CTF arc open by name. CTF dict open is a much better name. It opens a dictionary. <laughs> so, um, but the old names will always work. Uh, well, so what have we done in the last year? Uh, the linker has turned from a fairly terrible non-deduplicating linker that just added things and didn't try to eliminate types into a, into a linker that, to, to deduplicate types, into a linker that, that does deduplicate types, which is something Dwarf never quite got working. Um, it, you, it hashes type, de, type definitions together to, de, uh, uh, to, de, to distinguish them from each other and mixes in types they refer to. Um, types with the same definition always end up with the same hash no matter what translation unit they're in. Uh, and get emitted once. Types with distinct definitions end, end, um, will also end up in a shared dictionary unless they're ambiguous, in which case they end up that they go into a child. Um, most types end up uh, end up in the parents nearly all the time, uh, and we we can deal with cycles and so on and so forth. There is a link at the end of this talk to another talk which goes into great detail, more detail than you could possibly ever want. Um, we don't track what translation unit comes from where, uh, what, sorry, what type comes from what translation unit, uh, because that's good, because that costs space and most types are visible in most translation units. Um, in practice, debugger users don't care, they just want to be able to see the types and use them. Um, we, tr uh, we, we track them only if they, only if they conflict, um, if, if, a type, if a type is ambiguous, uh, it will end up in child dicts named after the translation unit, and then you'll look in the, uh, and then you'll only see them if you look in that translation unit. Um, th there are a actually a couple of alternative ways to distribute types. The common one is that all types which are not uh, which are not ambiguous go in, go into a single shared repository. Um, here you see struct bar and struct quotes, um, struct bar and int quotes are. Uh, in particular, int quicks only appears in one in one translation unit, but it still gets moved into the shared dictionary. 
uh, variable, uh, it, 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 in fact, a bad example, but variables, it's also the case of variable, or should probably have used a bunch of structures because they're actually types, maybe, or, or type disk, but if it includes for a type of its own. <laughs> um, there, is a, there is an alternative where every type that appears in only one translation unit goes into its own dictionary. Its own dictionary. This is probably mostly not useful, but if you have a program with, in which translation units tend to introduce massive numbers of types that are used nowhere else, uh, this might save time when you're, uh, uh, when, you're opening the, um, when you open the dictionary and avoid bringing massive numbers of useless types into scope when the debugger users are trying to look things up. Uh, if you're using this, you probably don't want to use the normal linking. There are some extra features I'm not going into, which let you group, type, group translation units together so that they're not one per TU. Um, but this is obscure, and I don't expect most people to use it. It's only for enormous projects, really. Other new things. Um, we have... There has long been a way to iterate over to, to iterate over things. Even the Solaris implementation had this. You could call something to iterate over structure over structure members, and it would call a function for you with every member one at a time. This is when I came to write the deduplicating linker, which used this a lot. It was incredibly clumsy because it, it, it meant that you had to introduce a new function call for every a new function was called for every structure member. All the new variables these, these needed new variables. You needed to Pass arguments down if you wanted to sh with, with special structures and if you wanted to share variables, it was so clunky. So I came up with new sort of a new sort of iter iterator modeled on Python generators and things like that, things like that, and frankly modeled on C for loops, um, which return a new value on every call. Um, so, you, so for structure members, you call it repeatedly, and, the f and, you, and you get a bunch of off a bunch of names back for structure members um, and and and, um, and and structure member offsets. It's much, much easier to use. Um, in fact, I, I have an example uh, in, in theory, but I'm not sure I know how to how, to, how the screen sharing works when I switch windows. Um, there's all uh, one of the one of the uses for this is an error warning stream. Um, if you call as you if you call CTF error warning next when you get an error out of out of libctf, it will hand you back human re a stream of human human readable error messages uh, in uh, translated into the appropriate into an appropriate language if the translation is available. Not everything has er human readable errors and warnings yet. It's mostly there for the linker at the moment because. You, when there are problems, you want to know what symbol caused them and that sort of thing. Uh, assertion failures also go in there. We do. We will never crash your program unless, possibly, if we're very unlucky and you run out of memory. Um, we pr we prefer to return at the ECTF internal error and spit assertion assertion failures into the error error and warning stream. We don't want the linker to crash uh, because of a problem in the debugging format. Um, New functionality, which is so new that it hasn't been debugged or pushed yet, but hopefully will be debugged and pushed by the time this, by the time this presentation goes live. Um, the funk info and data object sections mentioned earlier um, will uh, uh, will get emitted. The format system is changing, but I'm not bumping the version number because while the compiler tried to emit the old form, it actually got it wrong, so so no existing version of libctf could read it. Which is convenient because it means we can, we can be certain that the uh, that, that old format is completely unused and can change it freely without bumping the format version. Um, there are a few new API functions to look up types of symbols and iterate over uh, uh, iterate over all symbols. You can say, given the CTF archive, tell me which dictionary inside the archive um, has has the symbol of the, uh, has the type of this symbol in it, and give me the type back. Um, and there are functions to add symbols to dictionaries as well. Because how else would you, could we create, create them? Um, CTF lookup by symbols has changed. If you're used to it in the Solaris world, you can only call it on data objects. Uh, now you can call it on anything. If you call it on a function, you get a function pointer type back, which is exactly what users would expect. All functions in the program get added to the type section, or all publicly visible functions get added to the type section as CTFK function types, because they are visible types in the program. Every function can be used as a function pointer, and so, and so we should add it, to, add it as a type. This is very different from old, older implementations. Um, it's, it hasn't been debugged yet, it still crashes, it won't crash by the time, by the time, by the time it's pushed. <laughs> um, what are we doing in future? Um, the next, there have been a number of, I mentioned earlier in the talk, a lot of changes in format v4, compactness improvements. There are other improvements coming. Um, GNU-C can encode some things that we can't represent in V3. 
mostly mostly type and function attributes, but not entirely. We also we we can't represent enumerators with more than three bit four billion enumerands, for example. Not terribly likely, but they could happen, and so we should be able to encode them. Uh, we plan to improve compression a bit. We might try LZMA compressing everything. My only question there is what happens if uh, LZMA is not a required part of binutils, unlike Zlib. What happens if, bin, uh, if a user who builds binutils doesn't have LZMA? We would then have a CTS session they couldn't read, and I'm not entirely sure what you'd do in that situation. It has to be thought about. Um, we're going to add limited support for multiple namespaces to the CTF to CTF dictionaries, enough that you can that, that you can divide the file into a, a dictionary into namespaces, iterate over the namespaces, and and um, and look things up in a specific namespace. This means we can drop CTF archives for, for their use inside ELF files and just have one CTF dict which refers to every translation unit. Um, sharing the simple table, sharing the string table, it would be a significant compactive improvement. The API will be the same. They'll still appear to be CTF arc, blah, 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 the, but the internal representation would change. Um, we want to add a backtrace section. This has been a goal from the start, um, which would let, which would let us describe where parameters where where, where parameters are stored um, without needing an entire virtual machine to evaluate dwarf uh, um, expression location lists like dwarf. Um, the idea is to, we hope to be able to represent something like 99%. The simple 99% of um, function calls, um, well, uh, um, while um, not needing an enormously complicated readers. Um, and it would obviously refer to, to refer to, to, to types by CTF type ID and, and pointing to the type section like everything else in CTF. We're still designing it, pretty sure it can be done. It, sh uh, the, it should again be more compact than, um, uh, than Dwarf, but most of the compactness improvements will, improvement will probably come from using the CTF type section in the first place. Um, and the final thing we, we want to do is use it in more, in more things. Um, it can be used in GB, which we want to add support to it, to, to, for, it to, to it to for it to Pahol and the various other um, dwarves tools. Uh, but we can do more than that. Um, if libraries gain .cts sections, which is easy, you just compile them with minus gt and the cts section appears in the output shared object, um, you could use those sections to automatically generate header files. You don't need to ship header files anymore. Um, we don't. We can't yet generate C code from CTF, but it's perfectly doable. Um, we, we, you need format v4 for this because we need to be able to, to represent parameter names, but that's all. Um, we might be able to have LD or LDSO exploit the sections to detect ABI problems. Um, this would need change improvements to libctf so it didn't malloc so freely, um, but it's perfectly doable. Um, and it and it's and it seems like the sort of thing which, w which would be useful because we could spot not just that this symbol has changed version, but that this symbol refers to this type deep deep down inside the structure, which is uh, which which is inside this structure member, which is different from the other one. Because of the deduplicator, this is actually really fast. You can rely on the fact that types have the same ID if they are the same type, and different uh, different IDs if they are different types. So all we need to do is compare one integer. <laughs> Um, we need to, once we have a backtrace section, we need to teach GDB how to use it, probably Valgrind as well, and other things that want to, want to print backtraces fast. Um, and as a completely blue sky idea, we might even be, be able to, there are already built-ins in, um, in GCC, type of and so on, which let you query uh, things about types in C programs. They're pretty restricted. You should be able to get more info about types in C programs like, all, like you can in other lang modern languages that support introspection. And once you've got that, why can't it use libctf to query to, to ask about types in other, in other translation units and, and in other libraries? It's a bit blue sky. It requires fairly significant changes, but I don't, but I, I didn't see why it's not impossible. Um, there's a link to an LWN article with even madder ideas in it. Um, I encourage people to come up with more ideas. What could you do if if, if C is completely introspectable and um, and you are and you are completely free to look up to, to look up any types in it at any time? Um, also, of course, uh, one last thing we want to add is other, is other languages. Um, the first question we were asked is, what about when we this upstream this is, what about C++? What about C++? Oh, God, it's a nightmare, but it seems possible. Probably most of the file format would have to change if we were a C++ version of the, C, of, of the CTF type section. But why not? But that's for the future. Um, for now, this is what we've done. Um, any questions?